science is filled with doubt, skepticism, willingness to learn, openness to correction, faith is exactly the opposite. I'm going to tell two anecdotes to illustrate the difference. Kurt Wise is an American geologist, highly qualified, trained at the University of Chicago and at Harvard in geology and paleontology under Steve Gould, no less. But he had a fatal weakness. He was infected with deep faith early in his life and he couldn't shake it off. And as he grew older, after he graduated, he became increasingly uneasy about the mismatch, the incompatibility between his science, his geology, his paleontology, and his scripture. And one evening, he put it to the test with a pair of scissors. He got a Bible, and he went right through the whole Bible with, with a pair of scissors, cutting out, physically cutting out, every verse in the Bible that would have to go if he were to accept the scientific worldview that he'd learned at Chicago and Harvard. I quote, Try as I might, and even with the benefit of intact margins throughout the pages of Scripture, I found it impossible to pick up the Bible without it being rent in two. I had to make a decision between evolution and Scripture. Either the Scripture was true and evolution was wrong, or evolution was true and I must toss out the Bible. It was there that night that I accepted the Word of God and rejected all that would ever counter it, including evolution. With that, in great sorrow, I tossed into the fire all my dreams and hopes in science. I think that's a tragic story. I think that anything, in this case faith, that can do that to a man like Kurt Wise is a force for evil. And if it can do that to a highly educated scientist like Kurt Wise, just think what it can do to the rest of the population. My contrasting story is of a scientist, an elderly scientist who was a senior figure in my department at Oxford when I was an undergraduate. For years, this old man, when I say old, he's probably about the same age I am now, so I have to be careful. He had taught us and he had believed that, uh, that the Golgi apparatus, which is a, a piece of submicroscopic, a piece of microscopic apparatus inside most cells. He believed that the Golgi apparatus was an artifact. He thought it didn't exist. And he had written paper after paper after paper on this. He'd lectured to us undergraduates about this. Uh, and then one day, an American cell biologist came and gave a public lecture in our department in which he demonstrated beyond all possible doubt that the Golgi apparatus was real. Our old man strode to the front of the lecture hall, shook him by the hand, and said, my dear fellow, I wish to thank you. I have been wrong these 15 years. And all of us applauded till our hands were red, and none of us will ever have forgotten that incident. That is science at its best. That's the very opposite of faith. That's knowing when you're wrong and even being pleased to be disproved. That's a bit of an, of an ideal, but uh, that's what he did. What finally baffles me is the way our society, all of our society, has limply bought into the idea that faith should somehow be treated with exaggerated respect. Even secular individuals have come to accept the idea that faith should somehow be immune to criticism, simply because it is faith. Where you would gladly criticize somebody's political views or their artistic taste or their football team or their views on hunting or gun ownership or something like that, when it comes to faith, we are all expected to back off and say, no, no, we can't criticize faith. It isn't done. It's not good manners to criticize faith. Well, I think it's about time we started criticizing faith. The truth is that without this convention of good manners which pervades our society, faith couldn't withstand criticism because it has no resources with which to do the withstanding. How can you defend a position when there are, by definition, no arguments in its favor? So my suggestion is that we should henceforth abandon our social convention 
of automatic respect for religious faith. Finally, just to make the point that this only a theory, you all have seen that in criticisms of evolution. Evolution is only a theory. It's one of the crosses we have to bear, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> Isn't it ironic that this only a theory actually stems from the non-arrogance of science? Because scientists are careful enough and cautious enough to say that everything they know is only a theory, which is just awaiting disproof. Yet that humility comes back and bites us in the form of the criticism. Evolution is only a theory, which implies that it is in doubt. H.L. Mencken said, we must respect the other fellow's religion, but only in the sense and to the extent that we respect his theory that his wife is beautiful and his children smart. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.